India's moon mission is on track to make a soft landing. The historic mission would make it the only the fourth name in the world to do so. But as the Chandrayaan-3 readies itself for the most critical part, the landing, Weon's Siddharth MP explains the finer details. The latest image from the lunar surface captured by India's lunar craft. India's space agency ISRO is closing in on an attempt to land a spacecraft on the moon's south pole. Not just India, but the entire world is biting its nails cautiously as Chandrayaan 3's Vikram lander is set to attempt a landing on the moon. Nearly 14 years ago, it was Chandrayaan 1 mission, India's first mission to the moon, which found evidence of water on the lunar surface. And it's the quest for water which is vital for all life. But mind you, there are no hidden lakes under the lunar surface, but molecules of H2O embedded within. But before the Chandrayaan-3 makes its soft landing, it will have to overcome the 15 minutes of terror. The previous attempt, Chandrayaan-2, failed when the lander module crashed during landing in 2019. Learning from experience, ISRO has performed hundreds of experiments to ensure it achieves a soft landing. However, space is an unforgiving environment. The process of turning the engine thrusters to a vertical orientation and making the necessary adjustments is the most tricky part. For a command to reach from Earth to the moon and back, it takes at least 2.6 seconds. So this is too much of a lag for real-time action. So what is done? ISRO has programmed its spacecraft completely for autonomous landing. So once a command is issued, the spacecraft does everything that is required to reduce its horizontal velocity, then to convert it to vertical velocity, and then come land vertically like a helicopter. Unlike Chandrayaan-2, the latest mission has chosen a more ambitious aim of landing near the South Pole. Remember, this is mountainous terrain marked by bigger craters and deeper crevices. ISRO, however, is not focused only on the moon, but is working on more ambitious missions. To land in the other planets, yeah, this technology alone is not sufficient. Some more things are required. For example, if we wanted land in the Mars, what required is there is, in addition to the gravity, the Mars have the atmosphere also. So it has some more criticality, but definitely this forms a basis for the landing technology, but some more improvements required to go to other uh, landing in other planets also. Coming back to the present mission's complexities. Three years back, China's Change 5 lander managed a touchdown, but the lander sustained heavy damage and failed. On Saturday, Russia's Luna 25 managed to enter the lunar orbit successfully but crashed even before it made an attempt to land. Riding on a billion hopes, ISRO's moon mission is all set to take a giant leap for India's cosmic exploration. With Siddharth MP, Bureau Report, Vion, World is One. Well, Siddharth MP joining us live now from Istrak, Bengaluru. And Siddharth, this... Lunar landing, it's a zero error activity really that ISRO will be carrying out 384,000 kilometers away from Earth. Tell us more about this incredible feat. Hello, Oliver. Let me start by telling you that, uh, of course, like you pointed out, almost 3.84 lakh kilometers, that's how far the Earth and Moon are, that's how far the Earth and the spacecraft are. So, what happens is, you know, once at 5 44 pm IST, when the command is issued, the automatic landing sequence command initiation is issued. Right the next minute th uh, at 5.45, the spacecraft starts executing one by one command as per its onboard software and as per it has been programmed. So this is an entirely autonomous process purely because of the fact that lunar landing is something that has to be done in a very meticulous manner. Every moment throughout its journey, the craft will have to, you know, adjust its velocity, adjust its altitude, fire its engines accordingly, make corrections. All of this has to happen like clockwork. It has to happen with absolute perfection. So given that there is a, you know, nearly 2.6 seconds lag between communications, two-way communications between the Earth and Moon, it is not possible to steer the craft like, say, from the Earth station here in Bengaluru. 
Instead, what is done is the craft is completely programmed and the software is preloaded onto it. So once all the parameters are normal, the go-ahead is issued and the entire task is carried out by the craft on its own. So let's remember, this is so much uh, intense in terms of being zero error that if the craft slows down prematurely, it falls like a stone and it uh, you know uh, is completely destroyed. If the craft does not slow down on time and if it has excess velocity, the craft will just go crash on the moon at excess speeds. And then that, that's also one scenario where the mission is lost. However, what it will have to do, it will have to ideally reduce its velocity from close to 1.6 kilometers per second and come vertically and land at almost 1 meter per second or 2 meter per second. This is almost a thousand fold reduction in the craft's velocity. So that's what we are looking forward to this evening, Oliver. Siddharth, give us a sense of how many nations and space agencies are supporting India's lunar landing efforts. Well, Oliver, this uh, part of mission operations, essentially uh, controlling a spacecraft, giving it commands, uh, ensuring that it is operational, ensuring that all of its functions are being carried out as planned, this is known as mission operations. So as a spacecraft travels uh, through, the, uh, I mean, through the Earth orbit and also towards the Moon, 24-7 there are people part of the operations team who are controlling the spacecraft. It's just like playing a video game but of course in a very more important and more expensive sense and they're controlling the spacecraft, issuing commands and the craft executes it as and when these commands are issued. So that's how this entire process works. But however there is a catch. You cannot have antennae all over the world and then track a spacecraft. You need to be able to have multiple antennae at different locations, but that makes it very impractical and it makes it very expensive. Because the moon is only visible during some times of the day and some times of the night in some parts of the world, what is uh, being done by ISRO is ISRO, as usual, is taking the support of NASA and the European Space Agency, who have stations across the world on all major continents. Uh, uh, NASA alone has stations in Australia, in Europe and the US. In addition to that, the European Space Agency also has stations. So as and when the moon is visible over these respective regions, uh, the antennae in those parts of the world will look towards the moon and then they will track the Chandrayaan spacecraft and transfer the information to ISRO. Likewise, when the moon is visible in India over Indian stations, the antennae will look towards the moon, track Chandrayaan and then understand the process on their own. So when any nation in the world today undertakes a mission deep into space, to the moon, to Mars, all the stations across the world of various space agencies will help each other in this endeavor to track the spacecraft, Oliver.